Athelhampton House is a Tudor Manor House in Dorset in Southwest England. In 2019, Giles Keating became its new owner and one of his first restoration projects was to return the kitchen back to its Elizabethan origins. Give it a good stir and then 10, 15 minutes, hopefully we can try it. And then it's lovely and thick. Looking for ways to live in a more sustainable and cost-efficient way in an historic house is a challenge. But at Athelhampton, this challenge has been met in a new and revolutionary way. You would never guess that these were here. I, I couldn't see them from anywhere in the garden. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge, and every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Welcome to the drawing room here at Mapperton. And this is really the Tudor wing of the house. It was built in 1540s. And in this episode, I'm actually visiting a rather similar and wonderful grade one listed 15th century gem of a Tudor manor house. And it's located in the heart of Dorset. Athelhampton is about 30 minutes from Mapperton and do you know what's crazy is that I have actually never visited Athelhampton, <laughs> so I'm really excited to see it because it is an extraordinary Tudor building. And if you're like me and you love the history of these buildings, well, you're gonna love this house. But what is even more fascinating is that the owner Giles actually bought Athelhampton in 2019. So it's not one of these houses that's been in the family for hundreds of years. So I'm really excited to see what he's done with Athelhampton. And personally, I feel that these new historic house homeowners bring their own inspiration and they inject new energy and ideas into these houses. But first, of course, I am really keen to hear more about the history of Athelhampton. History hit is a streaming platform that is just for history fans, with fantastic documentaries covering fascinating figures and moments in history from all over the world. We've got unrivaled access to the world's leading historians, with hundreds of documentaries featuring everything from Boudicca to the British royal family. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now for a free trial, and real royalty fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use code REALROYALTY at checkout. Hello. Kelly, Hello. Great to see you. So, so nice Hi. to see you. I've finally made it after all these years. <laughs> it's so good that you're here. I know. It's brilliant. So I was just walking up. Of course, uh, I've seen Athelhampton photographed all that, but now I'm here in the flesh. I'd love for you to just tell me a little bit about the fabric of the building. It Is that okay? Be a pleasure. I know it's yes. cold, so we won't stay out too Let's long. Let's come and do it. Let's <laughs> go for it. So, okay. So here I mean, we are. Beautiful. Yep. Now, the way I always like to describe this is this part here 
is the older part, 1485, so the, the wars of the, the end of the Wars of the Roses, Henry VII, the first oh, Tudor. My goodness. And then over there, you've got what I call the modern extension, built about 60 years later, the start of Queen Elizabeth I's reign. Right. They, they got a bit of money from knocking down some of the abbeys locally, and that and, was what and they built. And that was it, yeah. and that was what they built. But what are the sort of the men perched on top? So the, the, this is the uh, Martin ape. So the Martins were the family who built this, ah. and the ape is their family symbol. And you'll find it all oh over my. the house, yes. Well, if you're into medieval um, fables, you'll know there's, um, the, the fox, Reynard the fox, yes. and one of the characters in that is, is Martin's ape, who is actually the kind of the good guy. Um, and, uh, and so, and here, look, you can see you've got the ape oh, at the top of the tower. And on the other <gasps> side, that's the unicorn. The poor thing has lost its horn. No. Uh, but because the very first Martins who built this married into the Farringdon family and the unicorn was their family symbol. So it's the marriage of the ape and the unicorn. All right, well, this is fascinating, Giles, because it's, I think it's always really interesting, of course, when you come to these houses and to first look outside. Yeah. Because, you know, there's, of course, there's so much going on in the inside, but looking at the fabric of the building and the carvings that were done. I, I, so beautiful, and the stone is all local stone and so on, yes. Yeah, yes. it's just wonderful, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Well, I can't wait to see what's inside. Come along in, out of the cold, brilliant. come on. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, it really was the most perfect day to see Athol Hampton for my very first time. And once I was inside, Giles was really keen to show me one of his first, and might I say, very big projects. So Julie, here we are in the Elizabethan kitchen. Oh my goodness! And then what you see here, this amazing big brick arch. So this is where the, cook, the cooking range Right. And we've got a spit there for turning and roasting things on. And uh, it's, it's... It's incredible. But can I ask, Giles, when, you know, you, you came here in 2019, is that right? That's right. And yeah. was this one of your first big restoration projects? Absolutely it was. I mean, I think when I first arrived, you know, this was all covered. The bricks were covered in thick layers of paint. We had 1950s kitchen units right the way across. No. Um, a, an old arga that didn't really work very well in the middle, and indeed underneath the arch was all bricked in. Ah, was it? So yes. you, you broke through here? Broke through all of that, and there was some quite complicated engineering to hold it all up. Yeah. So you've restored it back to, of course, the Elizabethan kitchen, what it obviously would have been. And, and it smells amazing, but it also looks like it was. I'm smelling <laughs> something that's Well, I was going to say, let made. me introduce you to Gemma, hi, our hi, head hi. chef. Hi. So Gemma, hi, Julie. Hi, hi. so nice to meet you. So now, what are you making here? It smells absolutely amazing. So I'm making Tudor pottage. Right, Tudor pottage. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that recipe. Obviously it's Tudor, but yep. it was popular. Yeah, so it's popular. Um, it is made out of uh, vegetables. It's, right. a very, it's a vegetable stew, it's based on a French recipe, I think, originally. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so tell me what vegetables are in so this tra recipe. So traditionally, the, the main recipe that we've sort of grown towards, because it's the most popular one, it has turnips, onions, parsnips, sweet, carrots, which I don't think would have been orange then, but they are right, now, right. obviously. <laughs> um, and lots of herbs and spices come from pepper and things like that, really. And it's thickened with pearl barley or oats. You know, in the Elizabethan time here we were in this big kitchen you know what was happening in this was sort of the heart of the house for all day long it was being used all day long I think that's absolutely spot on I mean obviously this is if you like below stairs yes uh, but though you can imagine maybe the lady of the house would come in from time to time see what's going on uh, chat with the head chef. Right. So I think always a hive of activity, certainly from very early in the morning until late at night, the fire burning away. Right. And of course, over there, you've got the, the, the what I think of as like a hob, 
where you'd have little fires that would keep things brewing away over yes. there. Yes. Yes. So you've got. You always are having a pot on. Something is happening all the time because yeah. you're feeding households, guests, yes. yes, and you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's 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 ongoing. Right. So listen, Gemma. I always ask, can I can I lend a helping hand? Absolutely. Yeah. Always. Yeah. What, what would you like me <laughs> well, to do? We are getting to the stage now where we need to put the pearl barley in because it does take a long time to cook. So okay. We need about a cupful of pearl barley popped into the pan. All right, do, do you want me to just guess my cup full? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just in a normal cup full. I mean, there's a cup full of onions, carrots, um, and Swede in there right now, so you can okay. give them a bit of a guess of... Of roughly. about a cup. I mean, it, they didn't have a No, they cup, didn't have, they of course didn't they didn't. So we can do okay. whatever you fancy. Are we and happy with that? Yeah, I think that looks good. Perfect. I do love pearl barley. Yeah. And then give it... Give it a good stir. Give it a good stir. And then we'll give it 10 minutes and then we'll add the, uh, the things that don't need cooking so long, like the leeks, the mushrooms. So prepping here, this is, would have been busy hustle bustle. Yeah. Finish the meal and then what's the next step? Well, we would uh, serve it through our lovely serving hatches. So I can, we can perhaps have a look at these. We've got essentially here an in-hatch to put the empty plates in. Ah. And then you load them all up along this kind of a table here, which they yes. actually called a dresser in Elizabethan times. And then it goes out through the other hatch okay. to be taken, to be served, to be carried through and served in the great hall to the family. Right. So I now understand that is the incoming. Yep. Dirty yep. plates. Exactly. <laughs> yep. And that's the outgoing. Your outgoing. Uh, yes. Plated. Yes. But when you were restoring the Elizabethan kitchen, were these two hatches? I mean, they were here originally, but could you see them? So the the inbound hatch, yes, that had been used in Victorian times. The outbound, the one though, was bricked up, and you know we could just about see the outline, but it was bricked. Right. Right. But from your research, of course, you knew that there would have been an in and an out. Exactly, and yes. Well, we knew there had to be in and out. That was the way it happened in Tudor times and a bit like the way in a modern kitchen as yeah, well. Yeah, no, no, of course, of course. So this was your first big rest restoration project here at Athelhampton. Yes, And yes. it's wonderful and the public can come in. As I said, I've already passed um, yep. many members of the public wanting to come in here. But do you have other restoration projects? You know, you've, you've been here since 2019, so, you know, you've... You're relatively new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, obviously, in a grade one listed house, you're, you, you don't have that many, but we have got one other big exciting one going on at the moment, and that is a window in the Great Hall, which right. has been blocked up for hundreds <gasps> of years, and we are now opening that up. Wow. Yes. Okay, brilliant. Well, I'd love to see that. Love well, to see that. I'm sure Gemma needs your hand a little yeah, bit longer, yeah. but uh, so I'll, I'll perhaps head off, leave you with her, and then meet you up in the Great yeah, Hall. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, I'll meet you at the Great Hall, Giles, and Gemma, do you mind if I just sort of yeah, do absolutely. a little bit more? Okay. Yeah, so um, the Pearl Barley's had its bit of time cooking, so now yeah. we're ready to add all the herbs and stuff, which is all chopped and prepped and ready. Okay. So we're going Fantastic. in. Fantastic. Give it a good stir, and then... 10, 15 minutes, hopefully we can try it. And then it's lovely and thick. I, that's the pearl barley making yeah. that, soaking up all the juice. That is fantastic. We'll give it a bit of a test and see if it needs any more. Oh, it smells so, so delicious. I think it's just like a really, really good vegetable soup, it is. isn't it? It so, is, exactly. Yeah. It's brilliant. Okay, okay. so um, leave this. Yeah. I'll I'm look gonna after go it for yeah. you and you can... Yeah. That'd be amazing. I'll look after it. Okay, I'm gonna go see Giles in the Great Hall, but yeah. mm, it smells incredible. Absolutely yeah, incredible. Excited. My perfect. belly's rumbling already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, per and perfect on a very cold day, yeah. that's for sure. At the heart of really all of these medieval Tudor manors was always the Great Hall. And Athelhampton's Great Hall, well, it is tremendous. It has been described as one of the finest examples of 15th century domestic architecture in all of England. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is, this is a perfect 
great hall. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's intact and it's beautiful. You must tell me more because this is astonishing. I mean, this, this hall is very similar to the way it would have been in 1485 when it was built. And, you know, that, and that is such a historic date. I mean, that's the, when the Wars of the Roses come to the end and Henry VII comes to power, the Tudor dynasty begins. Yes. And, you know, it lasts for over 100 years to 1603, when, oh. when, with Queen Elizabeth being the last of the Tudors in the second half of that. Of course, what's caught my eye is the minstrel gallery right there. There definitely was one there when it was right, first built. Right, right, right. But it sort of disappeared over the years. And then that one is uh, it very much as it would have been. And it is a very old one, but from another house. Right, right. So when I walk into the hall, the great hall at these historic houses, you can always tell with the, with the roof, the ceiling right here. But explain to me just this bit because it's absolutely beautiful the way that it's been carved. So yes, yeah, so this is a hammer beam roof, so called because of the shape of these beams. And it, it, it is one of the finest, certainly in the county, perhaps in the country actually. And, and it's pretty well original. It's really, I think, fabulous. It is, I mean, it, I will definitely say it's one of the finest I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of yes. historic houses. But looking beyond, then I can see windows up there. So, so what you're looking at there, this is our, the kind of latest restoration project. Those windows are original. They go right back to the beginning of the hall, but they have been blocked up for hundreds of no. years. Yes. So we've now, we've just actually unblocked, <gasps> we've taken the wood away. Uh, literally a couple of weeks ago. Oh my goodness! And we're going to we're now going to put some glass in there, and we're going to put in actually uh, we're being a bit bold. Um, Tell we're going me. to put in laser etched glass. But so, so when you arrived, 2019. Was that, did you know that there was a window there? Was it blocked up? You could tell that there was a window, or was this a later discovery? We could just about tell there was one there, but it was difficult because there was an organ there, but the organ was removed along with the rest of the furniture. Parts of these buildings, fabrics of the buildings, when you come to them is so many of them have stained glass and it's almost a lost art these days. But when you arrive at a historic house like yours and you see here they are still intact and I see very much the stained glass. I have this slight obsession with coat of arms. I just, I mean, I probably need to do a whole course on heraldry, I suspect. But I love the way that you can see the impaling. And for me, my learning curve as the American who's come over and married into this family was, of course, you know, hundreds of years ago, these noble families would then marry into other noble families. They had to. So then their coat of arms you know, the, the, the male would be impaled with the female's family's coat of arms. And I can see that happening there. Absolutely, you can. I mean, for example, we were talking earlier about the, the Martins marrying the Farringdons and the Farringdons had the unicorn yes. as their symbol. And you can see that the unicorns there in the middle of that yellow bar with the, with the, the unicorns yes. down the middle of it. And then we talked about the Martin ape. That was the, the family symbol of the Martins. Yes. And if you look at each of those windows, there is the ape at the top of them. I mean, it's fascinating. What I do love about stained glasses is that they tell a story. Always, yes, I, mean, I agree. That's what's so brilliant. And they, you, there's so many different elements to them in each element. Again, you can- The cottage <gasps> is ready. Oh my goodness. Oh, look, I was going to get it. Ooh. Thank you. Wow. Julie, do take a seat, please. Here. This is, do you know, I don't think I've had, I've ever, I'm just trying to think. Of course, I've had veggie stew before, but you know. Elizabethan it's, pottage, maybe not. I don't think not. I've had pottage before. Eh? Would oh, you like me to dish it up? That, oh my goodness, mm. that looks, looks beautiful. Ah, Gemma, thank you. You're quite welcome. Yeah. Thank Would you. Like you, to thank dish you. It up? you yes, yes, please. please. Yes. All right, I'll just remove that. Oh. Fantastic. Just give me a little bit. Oh. Same time. Yeah. Okay, Giles, I'll pass these over to you. Thank you, thank you, lovely. Lovely. There you go. Brilliant. Wow. Perhaps if you want some more. Okay, I'm sure we will. Enjoy your lunch. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, it looks wow. delicious. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. Give it a try, yeah. lovely, yeah. Mmm. 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 
That's that great. That yeah. is brilliant. Perfect on a cold day. It is just perfect for it. It really is. Yeah. Oh, it is, and the spices are fantastic. I can really the rosemary is really coming through. Yep. Yeah, mm. no, I think Gemma has done a brilliant job mm. here. And I love the way all the vegetables, oh. you know, can be grown locally, which is just fabulous. I mean, absolutely wonderful. I've also noticed that we are eating on pewter dishes. So this really is the full Elizabethan experience, isn't it? It, it is, yes. <laughs> you know, the, the pot is, uh, um, is, is the, the kind of pot they would have had, the spoon. And as you say, pewter, yeah, yes. definitely. If you think about our kind of backgrounds, you know, we're the new kids on the block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's <laughs> and, a good way to think of yeah, it. Um, for me, one of, I think, the most surprising, uh, I think, revelations is it is difficult to maintain and preserve these historic houses. And I think a lot of times people have this false narrative that we are living like they did in the Downton Abbey age, but yet what we're trying to do is we're not only preserving you know, this part of England's heritage, but we're also wanting to put our own mark on it. Do you find that as well? I think that's very important. And I mean, by putting your own mark, we don't mean putting up a glass extension. Of course not, but it's sympathetic and harmonic with the building and I think that's very important but yet using modern technology where that's relevant. Well that, exactly where that's relevant and and that's what's so I think wonderful when we were just talking about what you're doing with the you know the new found window which yes, is of course yes. hot, which blocked up for hundreds of years but putting the laser cut yeah. glass on it. Yeah. And the restoration of the window in the Great Hall isn't the only area at Athelhampton where Giles is using the latest technology to revive this Tudor Manor house. Athelhampton is striving to be more sustainable and economical by being the first solar powered manor house in the country. Heating historic homes is one of the greatest challenges house owners face in the 21st century. And when Giles moved to Athelhampton in 2019, he was faced with the enormous task of heating rooms without insulation or secondary glazing. But he took on this challenge in a new and revolutionary way. Giles, this is beautiful. And I can see we're coming into this the gardens, how, how many acres, you know, I always have to speak in acres as the American gardens do you have here? Sure, so about 20 acres of gardens here. Incredible. And uh, you've picked the most brilliant day to come, you really <laughs> have. Yeah. I, so, I do that, I do that. So Luke and I have always said, oh my gosh, Athelhampton, our neighbors, they are the first net zero, and I'll follow it up with castle, because I'm the American in any big manor house, I always think of a castle, but this is true. You've been able to achieve something that not very many people have been able to, and in particular in a grade one listed house. I think you're, you're right. And we're, I mean, we're very pleased to be able to do this. Yeah. So where are we entering into right now, Giles? So this we're is the kitchen garden now. And a lot of the produce for the cafe comes from here. Fantastic. And, um, well, I had a delicious, uh, I have to say, jacket potato. I haven't had one. Uh, in quite some time and I was very pleased. It really warmed me up, so. <laughs> very good, very good. Kudos to the chef. But we're now heading somewhere that is a part of this net zero project that began how many years ago? Uh, so it began nearly three years ago now, actually, yes. I'm gonna show you something that helped produce that jacket potato <laughs> that you had. It's fantastic. Well, but here, of course, is an enormous greenhouse. Yes, indeed. <sighs> I shall step inside because I know it'll be lovely and oh, warm in here. Oh, it's lovely and warm, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, great for growing the tomatoes for the cafe and so on. Wonderful. Come on through here and I will show you that. You have to duck your head. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Ooh, I get to go into the no entry the zone. No entry zone. The no yes, entry zone. Exactly. Very lucky, yeah, very yeah, lucky. Yeah. You can come too, everybody. <laughs> yes, exactly. And here we are. Oh. The solar panels, yes. My goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness, so, this is extraordinary. 
this is unbelievable. And how clever that, you, I mean, you would never guess that these were here. I, I couldn't see them from anywhere in the garden. They're, Nowhere could I see them. They're, they're just invisible, exactly, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the right question to ask. Do I ask how many solar panels you have or what are you producing? What, tell me. So these combined with some that we have in the field around the corner produce uh, at maximum 130 kilowatts in right. the middle of the day. Yes. And across the year as a whole, we're producing nearly 140 megawatt hours of electricity. That is a serious amount of right. electricity, yes. Is that, and, and that, okay, can, how close can you get to these? Can yeah, I, can we I, can come up can and, I, can, can absolutely, <laughs> you can come and touch them if you want, okay. yeah. yeah. And oh, fact, can I? Well, okay, great. We have to do that occasionally anyway, just if they, I mean, normally they're okay, but occasionally they just get a bit dirty, so. Uh, oh my goodness. Yes, yeah. Look at, and they're warm. Yeah, of well, they are. of course they, they are. are, yeah, yeah. Lovely and warm. This is magical. Okay, Giles, I have so many questions and I think many people watching this program will have questions as well. First and foremost, you know, you, you came to Athelhampton in 2019, so not that long ago. Yes. It was, I, presumably it was heated how, and electricity was the normal way, is that right? So, so what we had, we had gas tanks, yes. LPG tanks. Yep. And that was by far the biggest source of power for a lot, and we had lots of gas boilers which needed a lot of maintenance. And, uh, and then there was a small oil-fired Arga. Yes, yes, and, we have, still have that. <laughs> yeah, and, and then we had a, for emergencies, we had a diesel generator. Okay. A great sort of big beast of a thing. Okay. Um, and so all of that has gone. All, all of that has, has gone. gone. All of it has gone, yeah. Oh my goodness. And what was your inspiration for this project? Uh, well, and, and taking this here, and especially in a grade one listed house. I mean, did you know coming in, you thought, right, this is something I want to do. You had an idea around that. Or was it once you lived here for a bit, you thought, hold on, this is not sustainable. I'm going to get ahead of the curve. It did not make sense to be burning all that fossil fuel and just really, you know, having a kind of rather old, inefficient system. Yes. And why not put in something brand new that actually uses the new technologies and is zero emissions. And we, you know, that, that 140 megawatt hours is enough across the year to cover everything we need at Athelhampton. Everything, which is the heating, the cooking in the commercial kitchen, lighting, Light. oh. uh, even charging the occasional car. So no, it is, it is great. That yeah. is incredible. Yeah. So, okay, I'm just going to, I know that this is a silly question, but I am going to ask it because I know what the answer is, but I just want to hear it <laughs> from Giles. Is, so you do not receive any electricity bills or gas bills? So for the <laughs> Athelhampton house yes. and the gardens and the cafe, we, we get a bill in the middle of winter and then we get money back uh, in the summertime. Okay. Um, net, in carbon terms, yes. we actually are genuinely neutral because the, 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 what we're drawing down in the middle of winter is a little bit technical, but it comes in the middle of the night Right. When the grid is very low carbon. Yes, yes. Um, in terms of actual money, we pay a tiny bit because unfortunately what they, they don't give us as much back for each unit that we put back in as we buy from right. them. I see. Which, I see. you know, I can grumble about, but at yeah. the end of the day, it's tiny. It's, it, it's tiny compared to what exactly. we are in, in, in yeah. now, the, yeah. the electricity yeah. and, and the gas prices. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's tiny. And also your heating and, and lighting electricity, uh, a grade one listed house, a very big manor house, and you've got your cafe. Yes. So, yes. you know, without this, that bill would be enormous. It would be horrendous. And yes. then, I mean, as I'm sure you know, then of course what you end up, you have to, is you turn the thermostats right down or off. Yes. And then that's not so good for the fabric of the poor building. No. Not, not for the fabric <laughs> of the poor people, but that's another matter. But, yes, uh, no, that is, oh my goodness. It's incredible. But this, my understanding is this is just one, I'm seeing just one part of the project that you implemented. Is that right? That's right, yes. So the, the solar, this is all drawing it in from this beautiful sun. Exactly, yep. yep, yep. And then what happens? So this then is going to go to the heat pumps, which is what creates the heat and the hot water for, to actually keep the house warm. Okay, should we head there let's and look at those? Let's go and have a look okay, at those. Let's yeah, look at those. Let's head off.
This is so clever, and especially in a grade one listed building and garden. So now we're going to look at the heat pumps. Oh. And the, the heat pumps here are being, <gasps> they're being powered by the, by the solar power that we've just I seen. I see, so you've got solar power where we were just at in the kitchen garden. Yes, exactly. Coming all the way underground. Underground, of course. Right, yes, underground, yes. up through here. Yes. Now explain to me their purpose so I can get my head around so this. So these is incredible. machines, and you may be able to feel it, they're a bit like an inverse air conditioner. Yes. And um, so what they're doing is they are draw. Yes, this one is, is going, you can feel it pumping out air. Oh, yes. So this draws in uh, air at one temperature and it pumps it out at a lower temperature. Okay. And it extracts the heat from, from the air. Okay, so these two are working in tandem. Oh, yes, well, uh, the system, the kind of computer right, turns right. on and off as many yes. as it needs okay, at any given okay. moment. Oh my goodness. Yes, so, so they're using the solar power to extract, in effect, heat from the air, which is rather clever. Oh my goodness. This is some serious technology here. It's, it's it, good, it, isn't This it? is yes. very good. Yes. And you and have, yes. it looks like you've got sort of, t what is this, 10? We've got 10 here, here. yes. Oh, there's, and then so there's, there's another bank over the other side. And you're very, <laughs> it's very clever, Giles, because they're hidden away from view. Well, that is essential. And I mean, obviously you can see we're, we're very close to even the Elizabethan part, the Tudor yes. part of the house, but they really are tucked away in this kind of, you know, grotty area where we would just had dustbins or something. Right, you before. would have had exactly, so exactly. Nobody can see them, um, but here they are, nice <gasps> and close to warm up. The nice house. and yeah. wow. Okay, yeah. so this now is heating, ta taking what would be discarded usually, recycling it if yes, you like. Yes. Heating, and then there's another step, isn't there? Right. So, so yes. So this goes through one more kind of thing that looks a bit like a boiler, and then of course it has to come into the house yes and in a, in a kind of old-fashioned say a gas boiler you'd be heating the house through radiators yes and we are doing that to some extent but we're also making a lot of use of underfloor heating and we've even Wonderful. repurposed some of the old grills that were put in in the victorian era so i'd love to see inside then now sort of the end product if you like yes it coming up through the grills and this heat that I've just seen that's being extracted and pumped in at no cost. <laughs> let's, let's come and look, let's come and look. Now, I have to say, I did notice these. Yes. Before, when we were in here having our Elizabethan lunch. Let's, let's have but, a good look at oh them, shall we? Oh my goodness, yeah. yes. So these are the original Victorian grills. Fantastic. So these, uh, during the Victorian period, th then of course, were to heat the hall that we're in right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Heated by coal. By coal, like coming up as we know. through. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then, when you came in, this had then was this being used at all as a heat source? They they kind of modernised it. I don't know, thirty years ago, with a very clunky old uh, system. Right. And so barely working, I would say. Yeah. Right, yeah. and so that now you've, you're piping it up through and the heat's coming up. Exactly, so what is coming up from here is actually the heat that's being produced by those, those air source pumps that we were just looking at. Yeah, fantastic. So as far as the sort of architectural design of all of this and where the piping's, the pipe was coming through, that was already, the infrastructure was already there. It was, in one sense, it was replacing is that right? That is absolutely true here, here in the Great Hall. Okay. But as you went through the rest of the house, in some places, maybe there were old radiators, which we could use one or two of, but mainly had to upgrade. But also, we decided on another solution in some places, which was to remanufacture these grills and put them in other rooms. Ah, okay. Instead of having the wall radiators. Exactly. Much so, prettier. Much prettier. Yeah, yeah. Giles's innovative thinking and vision is shared by co-mastermind Stefan Pittman, who met me in the powerhouse of the whole project.
So I walked through, you know, a lot of this project that you and Giles uh, did together. I've seen the solar panels. I've seen yeah. the, I call them air conditioners, but they're not. Yeah. But to, and heat pumps. Yeah. Heat pumps. And but now we're here, and so just remind everybody who's watching yeah. again. These, it's almost as if you're. Tell me if I'm wrong, but it's almost as if you're almost like your own electric company. Uh, well, grid? yes, you're, so we're generating electricity from the solar panels, okay? Now, obviously, that's only at a certain peak of time. Yes. Um, and that changes throughout the year. Yes. And your demand changes throughout the year as well. So in the summer, for example, it's generating more energy than it usually would use. Right. And rather than that just be sent back to the grid, it's storing, storing it in it. these. I see. And then when that generation declines, as that decline becomes to a level that the, the estate needs more, the batteries start trickling in. Um, oh my goodness. And that's how it balances it out. And that, I see. The first 12 months of this system up and running, it's used, uh, it drew nine and a half megawatts of electricity from the grid, but sent back seven megawatts. Right. So that's a, that's a difference of two and a half megawatts, right. which is smaller than most three bed semis. Right, right. Um, and beforehand, you know, that was just massive, it was way beyond any of these numbers. So, so ultimately these batteries are offering that balance. Yeah, they're offering because the balance. It's a 12 bed, significant Tudor uh, manor house, largely single glazed, etc. I understand Giles has gone through all the upgrades we did inside the house. We've got the coach house, which is grade two star thatch building. Other than the thatch, there's no insulation there. Right, you know, right. There's, there's River Cottage, which is similar. There's outbuildings and, and sort of all the grounds um, and estate needs there. And within all of that, the energy usage from the grid is less than a three bed semi detached house. Unbelievable. So, Unbelievable. That is incredible. Yeah, right there. It's quite impressive. It's, it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. And, and all those, you know, sort of aspects you just said, single glazed, there's not double glazed on yeah. it. You're talking about no a five, insulation, no in insulation a 500 year old yeah. house. And same goes for the coach house, the thatched yeah. restaurants who now, yeah. um, you know, uh, yeah. the, the cost to heat those buildings right now without this would be astronomical. Oh, absolutely, you'd be looking at six figures easy. Yep, six uh, figures, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Stefan, this is fantastic. So Not thank all. you for taking the time. Nice what to a meet brilliant you. project, so nice to meet you. How amazing to think that until 2020, 100 tons of carbon were emitted annually at Athelhampton. And the aim of this project is to cut carbon emissions to zero. Giles has, of course, made a massive investment, but what is so inspiring and also rewarding is the long-term benefit to the environment. Now, what's fascinating for me as an American, to be perfectly honest, is that always, it seems like, you know, when you go to these historic houses, yes, yes. there is the history, the fabric, the architecture, the yep, inside, the yep, stories. Yep. But then, of course, you get to walk outside you do, and yes. there's usually a fantastic garden. Of is course. that right? Yeah, no, they, they go together. <laughs> they really do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, the, and, you know, the English love their gardens, yes, don't they? Yes, yes, absolutely. They do. And here, of course, I've heard so much about the gardens here at Athelhampton. So yep, you're going to yep. give me a tour, is that I right? I will do, yes. I will show you. Come on, come on through here. Wow. And this, this we call it the Corona. It sounds a bit bad given <laughs> what we've all been through, but it's, it's probably very it's popular a, it's now. A, it's a crown, and you can see these, these uh, little pyramids round, yes. um, or obelisks forming this crown. And this is really, this circular, this small circle is the, the heart of the Athelhampton Garden. Fantastic. And w the, the garden, has it evolved over the years? And uh, obviously it has, but can you give me a little bit of history around it? Of course. But right. the designer was a man called Inigo Thomas. Um, and he was an amazing man, real thinker and designer, um, architect and so on. And he drew inspiration from the Renaissance, from the Elizabethan right. era. 
he drew it all together and he had this idea of rooms, of outdoor rooms. Um, okay. So this is the room as it were at the heart yeah. of the outdoors. And right. And we can go into each of the little doorways around oh. the edge. Okay. And, well, and in fact, we've just come through one, which is, right. is the, where, of course, in front of the house where you would arrive and that links us to the house. And now, if you so like, which, we can Which come room through. are well, we going to? Let's it's come here to, to, to what we sometimes call the private or the east garden here. Oh, it is stunning. Look at this. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, and then you just have this fantastic view from you, the back of the house. Exactly. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. And overall, how long? Because when I, Matt Britton, I know our Italian eight gardens took yes. seven years, 1920 to 1927. Right. And these gardens okay, here, yes. what was the length? So I think the, the In, initial stage, these, these outdoor rooms that we're going through now, were built very quickly actually in oh, about right. perhaps two years oh, wow. and it was a massive effort they, they had to shift 40,000 kind of tons of earth which sounds an extraordinary amount yes it does and yes, indeed they had to demolish some old farm buildings because the house had had actually kind of become a farmhouse and it was being converted back to become a mansion right so there was lots <gasps> of work but they just really shall we come this way this around? is enormous now, yes is oh, this amazing <laughs> this yeah. is amazing the great court oh yeah. so this room is called the great, great court. court yeah okay fantastic Okay. Now these yeah, the, these are you. Yeah, tell me about these pyramid well, views. You see, I think Inigo Thomas put these here because if you look at pictures of old Elizabethan gardens, they often had yes. view pyramids. But now mostly they were kind of sort of knee high to a grasshopper. They were sort of down here somewhere or rather. And of course, over the years, these ones have just got bigger and <gasps> bigger and bigger. Look at this. Yes. And, and is this the, this is their peak or? Is there a potential that to they be could? To honest, I think they're now big, big. enough. Okay. And if anything, we'd <laughs> love to just perhaps make them not quite so big. But that is, that's a tall order. But yeah, no, yeah, I think they're is. a lovely size now. They they're are. Yep, this yep. is beautiful. And then we made our way to Giles' favourite room, the Mediterranean Garden, where tea was waiting for us. And it's my favourite because it's a bit of a sun trap at almost every time of year. Right. And um, in summertime, we might come and have a cocktail here before oh, supper. Sounds good. Uh, but obviously now it's winter and we perhaps want something a bit warmer and it's the middle of the day. <gasps> so we've got we've got a cup of tea for you oh, here. So, sensational. Yeah. Uh, Eucalyptus. You, uh, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Yes, yes. Absolutely fantastic. I can see why this is your favorite part this yes, is I, I'm yes, afraid yes. I'm gonna have to agree with you yeah I think I mean I love the great court yeah yep. don't get me wrong but there is just something spectacular about this tree yes eucalyptus yes. and then brought us some tea Cup of tea yeah well, brilliant yes. do you yep. know what we do have the sun and it is it is when you look at it it Please. is rather warm yeah brilliant so, oh cheers welcome cheers thank you yep. Giles what <laughs> an absolutely spectacular garden so Giles you know I just wanted to ask now that we're sort of sitting out here having a cup of tea relax the sun is on us you became the custodian of Applehampton in 2019 and what was it that really drew because this is a big project oh, you sure. know this is not like I'm just going to buy a a large modern house and have all the modernizations and it's much easier to restore, repair, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But what inspired you to say, right, I want to be a custodian of, you know, a home that's well over 500 years in, I, in history. Yeah, and I, and I mean, you're, you know, you know better than almost anyone what a big project and how much is involved. So, of course. But I think the answer is, I mean, it, it's a, I, I think, uh, it's just almost like falling in love. I mean, it is an amazing place. Yes. And if one's lucky enough to, to have that opportunity, very difficult to, to, to not be tempted by that. It right. is just extraordinary here. And I think it's because it's not just that you've got a wonderful old house, it's that you've got all the amazing history, all the people who've been connected with it, 
down history and right up to the present day. I That's mean, the right. wonderful people who work here and who know it, yes. all the visitors who come, people who've been married here, um, all that, that and then of course the gardens just stunning yes so, yeah. no and you've put it so eloquently because that's exactly how I feel it's about the stories past but also the stories present and the community that these houses still retain but in a different way yes so yes. you know when we look back 100 150 200 years ago and and of course in in Athel Hampton's case well over 500 years ago the community was very much tied in yes but that's true. we as custodians now our community is a much wider reach because it's the public we're saying come and enjoy yes. what we we want to share with you yes. and yes. it's it's sort of making sure that those invisible walls that were once up hundreds of years ago are completely down and it's that shared history and story um, and I think that's what's so wonderful. Now I couldn't agree more and I think as well as physically inviting people in or allowing them to see over over you know video and whatever it is also about showing people the history yes. and understanding how people lived in the past and so on. Yeah. That's and, all part and of it. Of course it is, and how we've evolved. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Um, this is, I'm thinking at one point, when it gets warmer, Giles, I might have to invite myself back, and I'm going to tell you, I'm usually a beer drinker. However, because I am a lover of Italy, Mediterranean, I would have an Aperol spritz with you. Would you do that with me that next time I come like back? That sounds like a deal. It <laughs> sounds like a deal. Yeah. All yeah. right, Aperol spritz it is, everybody, the next time we return.